So this is the second part of a tutorial into um, conforming using Nuke Studio. So what I wanted to move on to was how we actually go about breaking out shots for visual effects. This is one of the most powerful features of Nuke Studio, this idea that we can integrate new, new compositing scripts, scripts within the context of an edit. And, uh, and there's a hell of a lot of functionality within this that, um, that's definitely worth taking a look at. So, if we just start with this first green screen clip, we'll come to our Add Effects button and we can choose Create Comp. Okay, this is going to bring up this dialog asking us to determine where we want to save this, so I will have to link, navigate to my project. Uh, so it's in here. Um, and I've already created myself a folder called Comps, which I'll choose. You can see that that's appended the save area. So if I choose open now, you can see that we get this extra track placed on our timeline, which sits over the top of the other video tracks. And it doesn't matter how many video tracks we've got here, this would always sit over the top um, because it obscures the one below it. So what we're seeing here is this as opposed to this. Okay, so this effectively now is a reference to a new script which has now been created by New Studio and ready for us to use. Just as a further reference, you can see that we've also now got a folder called the VFX folder and now inside here, just take a look, we've got, just expand this out a little bit so we can see, we've got a um, We've got this reference here, which is to a nuke file. You can see the NK extension. And then we've got this here, which is referencing a DPX file. And at the moment, it's off because it hasn't actually been rendered yet. We haven't rendered anything from this nuke script yet. Uh, but in time, that will also be populated. Now, the choice of um, the choice of file types uh, we'll come on to later on when we actually look at the export uh, dialog and we look at trans transcoding. But for now. We're interested in this. This is a new script. So let's access this now. So to do this, we want to get at the node graph. So I'm just going to double click this. It's going to open this up in full screen. So I'm just going to have to uh, bring it back into the viewport. OK, and we can now um, we can now see this script and it's definitely worth us taking a look at this script and see what actually Nuke Studios created for us. So it's created as a, basically a set, of, a set of input nodes and a set of output nodes. So the input nodes are basically obviously there's the plate, um, there's a reformat, there's a, met a metadata tag which in our case we're not using so uh, we're not actually transferring any metadata and then we've got a frame range because obviously this is this clip is longer than the uh, this is longer than the clip so this is actually referencing frames 96 to 201 so we've got this frame range set here and then on the output side we've got nodes relating to uh, to to writing this out so again we've got a metadata tag we've got a time code tag and we've got the right uh, right tag which is which has already been populated with some export settings. And you can see DPX is set in there, which is why we were seeing it in the project panel. So what this means is that we would perform all our compositing in this area in between the two. That's that's really what this means. Anyway, I'll just quickly flick back to the uh, to the edit just to point out that this reference is this kind of red color. This is important because on the comp references there are three different states and we will need to take a look at those. The red state essentially means that a comp has been created but no changes have been made and nothing has yet been rendered from it. So let's just create something. So we'll come into the, um, this is going to be uh, really crude, but uh, I'm just going to add a node in here, just so that we can see a difference. So I'm just going to put a U-shift on, and I'm just going to rotate the U and just create something bonkers like that. Okay, and I'll save that, and then we'll go back to our, our clip. Now, you see that no change has been made, and this is because the, um, the clip is basically not yet rendered. I'm actually surprised that clip, clip didn't go um, a, a sort of a, a mustard yellow colour because um, because normally uh, the clip references turn to the yellow state when a change has been made inside the script but it's yet to be rendered. 
But anyway, let's now render this clip so we can see the difference. It will definitely go the mustard yellow when it's rendering. So to render it out, I just right click on it and it's again it's off the screen capture render comp and you can see now that we get a render bar telling us that this is rendering out and you can see it's gone this yellow color and then when it's finished it goes into its third state which is green okay we're not yet seeing the we're not yet seeing the green in in there so let's uh, let's flick over onto our conforming workspace again I'll just have to scale this back that is incredibly inconvenient and you can see now if we come back into our project panel that that's our nuke script but now we've also got a render in DPX form of this okay so what that essentially means is that we do have a representation of this okay so let me flick back to our, our comp and just close close the comp down and then come back to our viewer okay what I want to look at now is comp versioning because again one of the most powerful features of this is that we can basically load up iterations of an effect um, into this single container and then quickly in real time tap between them which means that it's very good for uh, for getting a um, an iterative uh, version or if we're providing the director or the DLP with several versions of an effect then we can essentially load them into this into this container and then quickly just flick between them to get sign off okay so versioning um, let's let's do it then so so if we click on this uh, in the on this icon sorry this uh, this uh, container and we come up to save new comp version oh dear I suspect I need to be in the conform workspace for this or maybe the editorial workspace so I'll just uh, flick flick this back okay so I'll I'll just pause the screen capture while I fathom out what's happening here and then I'll uh, hopefully be able to feedback on what's happening. Okay, I just re-rendered it. So, save a new comp version. No, that's not fixed it. I suspect that this is uh, that this is a little bit of glitch in the software, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save out and reopen the, and close and then reopen. Okay, so I just restarted it and then went to file, save as a new comp version, and it did that. So what we should now see, if we just come up on our timeline here, is if we hit the V button over this, now we can see two versions. Now at the moment we've got one which has been rendered, and we've got a second version, which we're going to flip onto now, which is which has got no changes. So let's go into this, and we'll make a different change. So let's take the U rotation in the opposite direction, and we will save that. I know I've not my, I mean, I've not brought my screen in, but um, I just for just for speed, and uh, and I'm going to close that comp, and then let's get back to our sequence. So what we've now got, if we look at our version control, is we've got a version which is rendered, and we've got a version which we know we've made a change to, but it's not yet rendered. So let's render this as well. So render comp again is off the timeline. You can see the status bar. We'll see it goes green once we um, once once it's finished, and we can now see that we've got two versions loaded into this into this setting, which we can now toddle between in real time. It's incredibly powerful once they've been rendered. Incredibly powerful because it's very easy just to get a sign off with a with a studio director or with a, a client sat next to you and basically say, "What do you think to this? What do you think to this?" And um, and of course, working iteratively, you can actually demonstrate, you know, the, your first phase and then your refinements and and obviously you can you can stack them up inside here. So, quite a powerful little feature. Now the realities of the industry are that if you're actually the conformer in this particular case, then chances are you're not the person that's actually doing the uh, doing the compositing. Or if you are, you, there may be other people that are actually compositing with you, and they may they may share your office. They may be in a different office. They may be in a different building. They may even be in a different company altogether. And um, and one of the things you are going to want to 
do is you're going to be able to want to check to see uh, when new versions come online and are populated into this. Now one of the things you can do in here is you can right click into your clip and you can come to version which again is just off the screen and choose scan for versions and that will actually scan through the the media uh, the, the project folder and look for any new versions of this um, of this particular script and if it finds new versions as you can see in this particular case it hasn't if it finds new versions it will present them to you in that window and then you can render them out and then they are added to your version system so that's another powerful feature of this anyway this has wrapped up the uh, my approach to uh, showing the uh, the breakout of the visual effects shots on um, on a sequence like this I'm going to wrap up at this point and in the third and final um, part of this tutorial we're going to take a look at, um, at trans transcoding and we're going to look at the export dialogue.